greet Fabienne Morel again, who will continue his talks on A1 algebraic topology and A1. Thank you very much. So this is a sequel of my very first talk, not the one on last Monday, uh, where I gave a general introduction to A1 homotopy, and I will try to give you some uh, very concrete examples and computation today. So we start by recalling the the frame of all of this, and I will only talk about unstable homotopy theory. Okay, so you have been acquainted with uh, with many other talks with uh, spectra and so on. So I will only talk about unstable homotopy theory. So some recollection, quick. So we fix a field, k, okay. and we denote by smooth k the category of finite type smooth scheme over k. Um, and what you, so smooth k schemes. And what you have uh, seen several times is uh, uh, summer school that there are several approaches which lead to the same homotopy category. But the idea is to embed that category into a bigger category, which everybody call spaces or motivic spaces. Uh, different uh, variants over k. Uh, so really, you want to extend that category because you cannot perform all the usual construction, like quotient. If you have a sub, uh, open subset, you cannot take the quotient. But here you can. Infinite sums, you have, you have everything. Uh, for us, for me, it would be a category of simplicial of sets on the category smooth k in the Nisnevich topology. But there are variants. You can take pre-sheaves. In uh, Joseph's uh, lecture, it was pre-sheaves, and so on and so on. And this uh, leads to the homotopy category. So I tend to denote this category H A1 of k, and I tend to call it the A1 homotopy category, so unstable, so A1 homotopy category, but there are different notation and names. It's also HK, the stable version being SHK with no A1, and also H mod for the one who want to call this the motivic uh, homotopy category. Uh, so it is obtained from the category of spaces. by inverting A1 weak equivalences equivalences, weak equivalences uh, which are in some way and uh, depending depending on the description you want of spaces there are different descriptions but at the end the category are all equivalent okay uh, this one is the same up to chemical equivalence, uh, which are generated. There are two ideas. The by the local or simplicial weak equivalence. Simplicial weak equivalences which were considered by, so it only depends on topology, the Nisnevich topology. It tells you that a morphism between two simplicial pre-sheaves or simplicial sheaves of sets is a simplicial weak equivalence if you evaluate on each uh, Nisnevich point, so the initialization of a point in a smooth scheme. Uh, it gives you a map of simplicial set, and this for each point should be a weak equivalence. So it's a technical, but it's well known. It was already in uh, uh, SGA. Um, and the second idea, of course, the projection of any space cross A1 to itself. So this should be also a weak, an A1 weak equivalence. So this is generated by, in some way, by these two ideas. Uh, and you get that category here. Uh, what we have seen, for instance, several times, but also in the lecture by uh, Joseph, uh, so there exists an A1 localization functor. So there exists an A1 
or Motivic, so he was using Motivic A1 uh, localization. which takes any space to any space here to its A1 localization or oh, it's the same uh, it's uh, just a change of notation in Joseph it was L mot uh, which is a space here with uh, a property of being A1 local And somehow, so it's something that you cannot really compute. It exists. You prove that there exists a model category structure, an uh, abstract way of defining this, such that it exists. So it means, for instance, you have for any space, this is an A1 weak equivalent here, to an A1 local guys. But this one, being very huge and uncomputable, basically, uh, still uh, has a property. for any other space over K, the morphism in the A1 homotopy category, so morphism here, is just in bijection chemically to the set of homotopy classes of simplicial maps from Y to the A1 localization. So this is the reason to introduce this because it proves a lot of it has a lot of formal consequence on the existence of the uh, A1 homotopy category and so on. But of course, so this is very concrete. Uh, you take morphism and you divide by a very uh, simple uh, equivalence relation. But of course, the problem is that this is very complicated to uh, understand. So and most of the computation that we can do never use a description of this. It's uh, used another way. OK, but this is the general uh, setup. So to prove the existence of these categories, uh, what we also saw in different contexts, uh, the Postnikov tower, so the A1 version uh, for any x space over k, you can reconstruct x from the successive truncation, Postnikov truncation, I, I use, I'm an old fashioned algebraic topologist, I use the old notation, the Postnikov truncation, Pn, uh, for any integer. The P0 truncation being the just a shift of set, is no simplicial structure, it's in fact the pi0, A1. Uh, the pi zero a one shift of uh, x. So in topology, it would be the pi zero uh, discrete set of connected component. And if um, x is pointed, uh, we fix a base point of x zero. Uh, then the, we know that so each of them is pointed. So you have a map from x zero here from the point to this one. You can consider the homotopy fiber of this projection, the truncation. And so we already saw this idea. This is an anomaly plane space. It's a space with only one uh, homotopy shift, which is, which is the nth A1 homotopy shift of the space here. And uh, x is the homotopy inverse limit, or the localization. I can put here an A1, it would be the same statement. The homotopy inverse limit of this tower. So somehow you can reconstruct any space connected, uh, because here it doesn't say anything on the, well, on the other homotopy sheaves from this tower here. There are a lot of uh, consequences. So first, you have heard uh, so a fact, it's a non-trivial theorem. These sheaves are strongly A1 invariant. Uh, for any n at least one, 
for n equal 1, this sheaf is maybe a sheaf of groups, which is not abelian. Uh, but we know that these for n greater or equal to 2 are sheaves of abelian groups. And it was uh, uh, proven by in Joseph's talk that if you have a strongly a one invariant sheaf on a fi field k which is perfect, uh, this is in fact so strongly a one invariant, but in fact it's automatically strictly a one a one invariant. I re recall it's in fact there is only one notion of a perfect field. <laughs> You are strongly A1 invariant, and if you are a billion, you are automatically strictly A1 invariant. And this means the following. So let me denote by ab A1 ST for A1 strict A1 invariant shifts of abelian groups, category of uh, of abelian groups. In the Nisnevich topology over the site of smooth K scheme and Nisnevich topology here, uh, which are strictly A1 invariant. Which means N strongly invariant in the terminology of uh, Joseph, but for any integer. And this means for any smooth scheme, any of them, and for any strictly A1 invariant sheaf here, the property is that the cohomology of x cross A1 value in M, the Nisnevich cohomology, it's always this, the map coming from the product, the projection to the product, is an isomorphism. So it's a very strong property, and uh, so the structure of the A1 homotopy theory over a field is of this type, so for a perfect field, there are some improvement over a general field. Uh, you can reconstruct X from any Alman MacLean spaces uh, with homotopy sheets of this property here. Yeah? Coefficient in M. Sorry, my M is not, uh, it's the same M. Yeah, sorry. And uh, yeah, I tend to put a point comma for the coefficient. Yeah. And this is Nisnevich. So I will not write it's always a cohomogeneous in the Nisnevich topology in this talk. I will not consider anything else. Uh, there are nice property that category, so it's a subcategory of the category of sheaves of abelian groups. In fact, it's a Nabilian category, it's a Gordon Abelian category, and the functor is exact. So it's non-trivial. It means if you take a morphism in that category here, you compute the kernel and co-kernel here, it's also in that category. Uh, it's a, so it's a nice category. And you, so I will uh, show you how to make some computation here. I will give you some uh, example of uh, computation today. Um, another fact also, I think it's the last one for the recollection. Then I will start with uh, computation, the connectivity theorem. was uh, proven in uh, Ayub's extra. So it says the following. If x, so there was some, uh, so, uh, so many people have different notations and uh, conventions. So the notion of uh, being uh, n connective was a bit uh, tricky. So I will, uh, again, old fashioned, uh, recall you what I mean by n connected. Uh, not connective, connected. So zero connected in topology means the pi zero is trivial, and and so on. Okay, uh, let let put it this way. So a one n connected. So there is an a one everywhere. So n is an integer. If for any point, uh, so there is always a trick here. You should start by saying that x is non-empty. Because what I write here is empty. If, if x is empty, and it's wrong. Uh, to be connected, uh, you have to be uh, non-empty. But for any base point, for any integer i less or equal to n, 
sorry, n connected, so simply short, so I'm giving the definition of being, sorry, simplicially n connected, yeah, for any i less or equal to n, the i's homotopy shift of x point with this base point here is trivial. This is n connected, okay? And the theorem is that then the uh, A1 localization is uh, n connected. And this statement allows one to use the following uh, convention. One says in that case, there is no distinction uh, that the space is A1 n connected if this is true. But it is uh, canonical because if it is true here, simply or whatever the you A1 localize, and uh, this A1 localization is simply n connected. So this is also not uh, completely trivial. And in fact, you can deduce either that from this or that implies the other one as uh, Joseph um, sketched in his lecture. So now it's finished with the general recollection. I wanted to make this uh, clear. So now I want to give you some example of computations. And again, the computation are never done by trying to compute these things here. It's a it's another technique. There is no way to compute this or to describe. Uh, so examples. So how can I apply the connectivity theorem, for instance? I take the affine spy space minus 0. I want to prove it is uh, n minus 2 connected. So we have, you have seen in the lecture, uh, in some lectures, uh, at the end, this is A1 equivalent to the N minus 1 suspension, so simply a suspension, it was used several times, of a smash product of GM N times, the multiplicative groups here. So this one, it's an N minus 1 suspension, simply shall of a uh, space which is, uh, which is what it is, uh, so it is N minus 2, simply connected. But how can I use, how can I see this from here? So here's the, and to deduce that this is n minus 1, a1 connected using this. Uh, so you have to connect these two things. And uh, so I recall you how. Uh, so if you look at this, uh, so n equal 2 here, you can cover this by, and to be non-zero in a2, it means that one of the coordinates has to be invertible. So it is covered by uh, a1 cross gm and gm cross a1. So this is a, an open covering of a2 minus 0, and the intersection is gm cross gm here. So this square is both uh, Cartesian, it's the intersection, and co-Cartesian. This is uh, in the category of sheet of sets, uh, the sum of this diagram here. So it's also true topologically. So this guy is the homotopy co-limit of this diagram here. It's obtained by gluing this and this over that. Now what you see is that you can project, you can forget the A1 here, and this maps to the following diagram. Uh, you remove the A1 here. So this map, sorry, to the first one, and this one to this one here. Now you map this diagram to this one, there is no A1 anymore, and the co-limit is really this one. So this construction in topology is called a join of two spaces. You put two, if they are uh, pointed, two pointed spaces, x cross y. You map the product to x and to y. You take the co-limit. It has the homotopy type of a simple suspension of x mash y. It's called a join construction. So it means that this, there is a morphism into the homotopy co-limit here. Um, which is an A1 equivalence. Because each projection here is an A1 equivalence. Here it's an isomorphism, here it's an A1 equivalence. So the homotopy limit uh, here uh, mapped to this one through an A1 equivalence. So it means that the A1 localization of that is the same as this one. Now this one is zero connected, so this implies that uh, the A1 localization 
which is the same as this one, is zero connected. So we can say now A2 minus zero is A1 equivalent, so it's another byproduct to uh, sigma of GM smash GM, and is A1 zero connected. You could also prove it directly, uh, because you can prove a, a field that, in fact, to be uh, A1 connected, it is sufficient to be A1 uh, chain connected. And here, if you take uh, a field extension of the base field and you take a rational uh, point, k point of this uh, scheme here with value in k, you can join any of them uh, by a chain of A1s. It's easy because, uh, yeah, you can do it by hands. So you can, in fact, prove uh, by hands that this is A1 connected. Okay. But the same picture here can be generalized for uh, any n. You can prove also that a n minus 0 for n greater or equal to, z to 2 is uh, 0 a1 connected. But here you prove more uh, in the same way. Uh, you can cover a n minus zero by the union of uh, a one cross a one. You remove one of the a one in the middle at the ith place, and you put a gm, and then a one cross a one. And using the same trick, so you can see that the two by two intersection are uh, a ones some a couple of times cross gm cross gm and uh, three by three and so on it's completely combinatorial you can see that there is a natural morphism to the join and to the homotopical limit of a diagram involving only powers of gn and projections which is well known to be the the join of n copies uh, so which is the homotopical limit of a diagram so the n by n intersection, there is only one, gem power n, and then you have a diagram which are projection to gm uh, power n minus one. You have several of them, and so on. So it's a complicated diagram, but you can uh, study this and understand this completely com combinatorially. It's uh, the n minus one suspension of here. So we know that this is an A1 equivalence, and the corollary that a n minus zero is a one equivalence to that and is uh, a one n minus one uh, minus two here you have n minus one suspension it's only n minus two connected so in particular pi i a one is uh, trivial if i is less or equal to n minus 2. So this is non-trivial. Uh, for a big n, uh, you really need to, to work, and uh, it doesn't, it's not a formal consequence of the, of the definitions. Yeah, yeah, of course, none of them, none of them. So I'm not using the same thing uh, as uh, Joseph because he was only caring about the abstract properties. Uh, so we, it was forbidden to write this So because uh, the space were not spaces. So for me, it's uh, just a space. It's not A1 local. And this only means that when you A1 localize, then it has this property here to be, yeah. So it's, yeah. it's easier to, I would say, to talk about. Remember, he said in his lecture, well, with his definition, it's hard to give an example because you have to find a pre shift of can complex and so on and so on. Here, I don't care, so I have many examples because there are not motivic spaces in his definition. They are not A1 local. So here we are done. Now, that's uh, good, and I can move to the next step, which 
is uh, going to be kind of new. Well, I mean, I will give details on that. Uh, it was used already in the, in, the, in the summer school. What about the next one? So this is n minus 2 connected. So what about the pi n minus 1? OK. So fact. A1 n minus 1 uh, homotopy shift of a n minus 0, which is the same thing. So I put equal, it's canically isomorphic. Uh, the micro, OK, works. So somehow here you are computing, so to say, uh, maps from an n minus 1 simplicial sphere to this. So the n minus 1 somehow cancel. And what you can see is that, uh, they, so this is a strictly a one down shift, satisfying this property here. And for any n tuple of unit, somewhere, uh, if you take a field extension of the base field k, and uh, you want to evaluate uh, uh, over k here, you see that n tuple of units here will define a chemical element here. So you have. There exists a canical morphism of sheaves, sheaves of sets only, uh, using the fact that these are the same of uh, the n smash product. So if you remember the smash product, so this is pointed by the one, the unit one, and you take the product n times by itself and you divide by all the uh, sub products uh, which contain at least one of the base points. Right? Uh, and smash product here. It's a sheaf of sets, and there is a canical morphism of this sheaf of sets to this one. With uh, this property here, the strictly one. The fact, the theorem, is that in fact this one is the universal strictly one and sheaf receiving this. So, and So it's one of the computations you want, but I will describe this in more details. Pre strictly A1 event shift. Uh, well, generated by GM smash N, by which I mean for any strictly A1 event shift. So in the category of strictly A1 event shift over K. Uh, morphism in that category from uh, uh, this one. Sorry, it was a lapsus. So it's as good as you can expect. It's the free one, OK, uh, to M. It means when you compose, you get a morphism here, you compose, you take the restriction here, uh, om of pointed sheaves of sets, pointed, it's important, this is pointed, from gm smash n to m, it's a bijection. OK, so it means, so if you think about uh, classical topology, for instance, you take the real points. Uh, this has the homotopy type of Z mod 2, R star. It's contractible, it's, it's uh, homotopy type of plus or minus 1. Uh, if you take the real point, this is a also a zero sphere. So this can be considered as a, a weighted or twisted zero dimensional sphere here. Uh, so here, in some sense, it tells you it's like the computation in topology that the first non trivial homotopy group of a sphere and the suspension n minus 1 is just the free object. So in topology, it is z. Here it is this free object here. And I will describe it now, because I think we never saw the definition of that shift, uh, min of it k theory. So I think uh, it deserves to be defined precisely. theorem. This is true over any field. 
Uh, most of the some properties are true only of a perfect field because everything, the spheres, this one, are defined of a uh, base field, a prime field, which is perfect. Uh, all of this is true of any field by basic tensions. Theorem uh, for any the pi n minus 1. So I will make this uh, concrete. I will describe you the shift. is isomorphic to a chemical morphism. So this will be a strictly one invariant shift with a map from GM's machine to itself. So uh, the, the statement, and this will be the universal one, and the theorem say that it's an isomorphism. And this is the name, unramified, so the bar here, unramified shift of min of it, k in weight n. Hence, and ramified mil no no k theory in weight n. So I will describe this, okay? And I will describe this. You also saw this uh, ID several times. Uh, by describing uh, the section of the sheaf on field extension of the base field, on the function field of all the smooth irreducible uh, scheme over K. So, on that sheaf, uh, so for any K finite type field extension of the base field K, but in fact I will define this for any field, it's true for any field, but in particular when you consider only finite uh, type field extension, which are separable, then you can define this shift over uh, smooth K. We define the following. So we are looking for something universal on symbols, on units. So we have seen one definition quickly of Milner K-theory. So one defines the following. Of course, it took some time to find this. There were some approximations which were found and at the end, so the following list of uh, the presentation was found in, uh, in collaboration with Mike Hopkins, who is uh, one of the favorite mathematical object is the Hopf map, eta. So he really was fascinating of the uh, appearance of the Hopf map here. Um, so the eta I will use here come from the Hopf map, as you will see. So it's something which should be uh, in each degree, it will be z graded, <laughs> and in degree n, at least uh, greater equal to one, for any n tuple of units in the field here, there should be a chemical map here. Okay, so one way to do this is to consider the tensor algebra. And the big difference here, the big difference with the definition of Milner K theory, I will put the same set, the units of the field K but it's really as a set. And in the definition of Milner K-theory, it was uh, the tensor algebra uh, over K-star, but K-star considered as an abelian group. Here it's considered as a set. There is no other relation. And a symbol, eta. So you take the tensor algebra over these two sets, quite big. This is placed in degree plus one, any unit, and this is placed in degree minus one. So it's an associative algebra. Um, and here are the relations, and there are four of them. So the first well-known one is the Steinberg relation. If you take a unit in uh, degree one, so a unit here, which is different from one, so a unit is different from zero, but it's also supposed to be different from one, then the product is zero. So you divide by the ideal generated by uh, this list first. Then the second one explain why it's here, the set, 
And how do you compute the symbol? So this, the class, if you take a unit here, the class of A, so the image of this unit here, will be denoted by this bracket, A bracket. So the class of the product is not clear because this is a set. So there is a relation, and it is obtained this way. Of course, these are in degree 1, and this is a relation degree 2. This is degree 1. And it's not multiplicative. You have a correcting terms. And this is where uh, Mike uh, uh, helped a lot, because the Hopf map, uh, the real Hopf map from a2 minus 0 uh, to p1 has to do with this relation. Okay? times eta. So you have plus 1 here, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, minus 1. So everything is degree 1. So it works. And then there is a strange relation. Uh, this one. Uh, and I will write it so as follows. So there is eta in factor times uh, 1 plus, so you have a 2. So I separate plus eta minus 1. So this strange relation can be rewritten as eta times this element is 0. And I wrote it 1 plus something. And this something becomes the class of minus 1 in degree 0, which would be seen to be the Gothenic vitring. So it's the quadratic form associated to minus 1. And we see that now this object is h, so the half, the hyperbolic plane. So eta times h is 0. So this strange relation, in fact, is this one. And the last one is that eta is central. So this is the definition. Uh, the point is all of this relation can be checked by hands in homotopy theory, in A1 homotopy theory, using only A1 homotopy uh, invariance. So somehow you can map for any field this object in degree uh, n equal uh, at least 2 uh, to the corresponding object here. But you still have to work to prove it's an isomorphism, but at least there is a map. Yeah, yeah, I'm so I insisted. It's a tensor algebra on the set. I don't know how to write it, so I put this. Uh, uh, it's not pounds, yeah. Tensor. Over. I should put the free group on that, but uh, yeah. So, on the set. So what we. So I still have twenty minutes, yeah, something like that. Um, so some remarks about this. First, uh, obviously, for any given k, you have a map from the units smash n. It's not so obvious. You have to check first that the, you have a lot of preliminary. So, but you can go to uh, Minor's uh, article and Minor case theory. There are a lot of uh, similar proofs. And the fact that um, the class of one is zero, for instance, it's not written here, but it's true. You can prove it from these relations. And the class of one, the bracket of one, is Trivial. So this induces a chemical symbol map for any field K, which take an n tuple to the product. Of course, it's a it's a ring, so I can multiply. And this is this map. So and because one is zero, so it, it factorizes through the smash product here, and this map. So you have to work to turn this into a shift to prove it that to prove that it's a strictly a one invariant shift and to prove it's a universal one. Okay, but you can do this. Okay, it's possible, like for Milner case theory, and you prove this theorem. Okay, uh, and the map comes from this. this. This is the universal construction that you can imagine. The relation are coming from A1 on the P theory. So the only statement is basically they are the only relation. You have nothing else. Everything S uh, is a consequence of this, so to say. So for N, uh, at least one. Um, of course, if you know Minor K theory, it's uh, 
instantaneous to observe that if you divide this ring, so it's a z graded ring, eh? eta is degree minus one, so it's z graded. If you kill eta here, uh, the last two relations just disappear. There is no relation here. And here, the symbol becomes uh, multiplicative or additive. So this is mean of the theory. Okay? And in particular, when you kill eta in negative degrees, there is nothing. So this is mean of K theory. Of K. If uh, you kill, so the H and eta play some kind of uh, complementary role uh, that you've also uh, heard a lot in this uh, summer school and the uh, quadratic form aspects or taking real point, taking uh, complex points and it's uh, an uh, occurrence of this case also. If you divide this string by H, you get what I call Witt-K theory. This is why it's called mean of Witt k theory. Now you have these two elements whose product is zero. You kill H, it's the Witt k theory. And in fact, it's a non-trivial. So it's a consequence of minor conjecture proven by Wojewski and all, uh, mod two uh, on quality forms and uh, etal cohomology. Uh, it is the uh, direct sum over all integers of the power. So you already saw the definition of the fundamental ideal uh, in the Rotating vitring, or in fact the same in the vitring, and it is meant that for n negative, this is uh, the vitring. So it means if you kill h here, in negative degree you get the vitring uh, in each degree, and uh, in degree zero the vitring, in degree one the, f the ideal i of k, in degree two the f uh, power of, so i square and so on. Okay, and this is non-trivial result. You also have this following description, which is also non-trivial and use the minor conjecture. Uh, so it's four for any integer, any. You have the following. Cartesian square. So you have a epimorphism to the minor k theory of k in degree n. You have uh, by this an epimorphism to i n of k, and you can divide by the n plus one power, which is contained in this ideal here, and the minor. Wojewodzki, the minor conjecture, tells you that this is, in fact, uh, minor k theory in degree n modulo 2. So there is also a canonical map here. But you have to, well, there is a canonical map here, but you use this. And in fact, this is Cartesian. It's Cartesian. And of course, it's non trivial. So this object is, in fact, uh, exactly, so it's this ID to fit the complex point topology intuition with the real point topology intuition uh, together, and this is the solution. You take the fiber product here, okay? So you have to think about this part are compatible when you take a, comp a real uh, embedding of the base field, and here the complex embedding, okay? Um, and of course, very important, if you look at uh, this diagram for n equals zero, here you have uh, k zero, here you have the vitring, uh, I0 is the, is the vitring itself. Here you have the vitring modulo I, which is Z mod 2. And here you have Z. Okay, so K0 min of it. And this is elementary. It doesn't need any. So part of these are elementary. For instance, in, uh, for N negative, it's, uh, it's easy. Here for N negative, this is 0. And for N negative, I should tell him this diagram tells you that Kn min of it is just the bit group. And the multiplication by eta is an isomorphism in negative degree. It's given by this. And here it tells you that this is uh, uh, the fiber product, which is here. It's Cartesian. So uh, this is the quotenic between. 
And uh, the class of uh, the quasi Franck 1 class of uh, unit U in K is, with this formulation here, the uh, eta cap 1 plus 1. So it explains everything. So from this, you can check the description. So um, some application. You already uh, saw one several times. And now we'll finish by uh, explaining some composition of the fundamental group, which is also very interesting. So uh, application. There are several, so you can really compute. If you look at uh, the vibration, uh, you saw this, so I will go very quickly, several times. This is a vibration in the A1 homotopy category. And if you project a matrix, an N matrix, invertible to the first column, you get a morphism to N minus 0, which is easily seen to be an A1 equivalent. A1 equivalence here. So this is a fiber. Uh, this leads to the Euler class for any vector bundle over a smooth scheme. Well, it's not true in general that the morphism R, uh, so it's not true that, they, uh, m uh, that the homotopy class from X to BGN are the isomorphic classes. But any vector bundle of rank N over X defines such a map chemically. OK, but it doesn't classify. So for any such, uh, so you have this map here. Obstruction theory defines you an uh, Euler class. In the HN, uh, you look at the first. So all the homotopy sheaves in low degree are trivial, except the first one is n minus 1. And this will lead to an obstruction in this sheaf here. Here, which is not correct, twisted by the determinant of Xi. And this is Minorvit K theory in weight N, the shift here. And so you saw this, and this lead to the computation for vector balance. So now let me finish by, so how many time, how much time? 10. Why? Mark, really? Never expect that, yeah? Ah, you were joking, OK. So I told you I really want to uh, stay unstable. So this is a basic example. So now um, oh, I forgot to take the next one. So I will skip the theory of A1 covering. So I just want to mention that this is a very interesting uh, invariant, uh, which is really unstable, particularly when it's non-commutative. So if x is a space which is uh, A1 connected, only one A1 connected component, but it's a space, completely general. You can define the notion of covering, A1 covering of X, like in topology. Uh, this is the category of morphies from a space Y to X, so X is fixed. And the covering of X, what is the property? And one definition is that this morphism as the right lifting unique unique right lifting property with respect to trivial cofibration, trivial A1 cofibration. So I will explain. It's a big word for a very simple uh, uh, intuition. Now you take uh, another morphism here, which is an inclusion cofibration. So it's a monomorphism of spaces. And it's also an A1 weak equivalence. This is trivial A1 cofibration here. And you assume that you have this 
kind of diagram, commutative. Then there exists a unique lifting. If you look at your uh, textbook on uh, algebraic topology, there is an analogous definition for a CW complex. A covering is a map of this type such that it has a unique homotopy lifting property. If you put here A and A cross zero one with a commutative diagram, there is a unique lifting. You can lift so. So it's a generalization of that. Okay. Then this category, uh, if you have a base point here uh, through the realization functor, you take the stock. I'm going uh, quick. Uh, okay. Uh, you can evaluate uh, covering, you take the fiber, you have a base point here, you evaluate this, you take the fiber product, the fiber, it's a sheaf of sets. First, it is A1 invariant as a sheaf of sets. Second, it has a, an action of the fundamental group, and it's an equivalence of category. A1 invariant sheaf of sets. So it works exactly the same way. In particular, as usual, uh, in that category, you have the pi 1 itself, considered as a uh, sheaf of set, A1 invariant, with its uh, self-action and the product. This is a universal covering. Yeah, so you have a base point, so you have a covering. You have the base point here, so it's a vibration. If you take the fiber, it's, uh, it maps to the point, and it's A1 local because it's an A1 vibration, so you, and it's A1 invariant, and you can see that there is an action like in topology, uh, a bit uh, more sophisticated, but uh, more or less the same idea. You, you have an action of the fundamental group, shift, and it is an equivalence. Okay. I cannot say more, so it's quite analogous. In particular, there exists a unique up to canonical isomorphism covering of this type, which is a Galois covering. So the fundamental group acts freely on that. It's a torsor in the Nislevich topology under this group here. And this is the quotient here, universal covering. Uh, this is characterized up to canonical equivalence. Uh, you have to have the base point here that it is uh, uh, one A1 connected. So you start from a zero connected space pointed. There is only one up to isomorphism uh, covering here, which is connected and one connected in the A1 sense. And this is it. So examples. I can even give you, well, basically one example, infinitely many, but uh, basically the same for N at least two, a n minus zero plus one, say a n plus one, let me think about this here, yeah, to p n, the canonical GM torsor here. And uh, for n equal one, you have a two minus zero to p one. I guess I will stop here. So how many minutes now you can you can be, huh? Oh, you six, minutes. six minutes. Oh, it's OK. Uh, so for n equal 1, you have this. This guy here from the theorem I mentioned at the beginning, and uh, connectivity and so on, is uh, 1 connected. It's a covering because it's a torsor over GM, so it is the universal covering. For n greater or equal to 2, the universal covering of Pn, in this sense, is a n plus 1 minus 0. And the fundamental group is GM. What about this? The problem here, it's a covering, no problem. So it's an element here. But this one is not one connected. Okay, And it gives you some interesting object. n equal 1, you get, so like in topology, uh, you have uh, this covering. So the pi 1 of a2 minus 0 is non-trivial. But you get a long exact sequence in uh, homotopy sheaves. 
and this gives you so the pi 1 of gm is trivial gm is a discrete uh, if you take the frontal group at the base point it's trivial so you get 0 then you get the pi 1 of a2 minus 0 a1 everything is a1 pi 1 of p1 and uh, gm and you should think about the, this as a it's a principal vibration here I can put bgm the infinite uh, bgm which we know as a model you have seen that several times it's the infinite projective space and this is the canonical map here and you have the associated uh, long exact sequence which in terms of pi 1 uh, end here uh, now you can check so using the the map I already mentioned so this is a projection here there exists a canonical morphism of sheaves of uh, sets so pointed pointed uh, sigma this way so this morphism of sheaves of groups admit canonically a section which is the you take u and you have a canonical because this is a suspension uh, remember p1 is the simplest suspension of gm so if you have a unit you get a, a map from s1 to this so there is a canonical section here it's not a morphism of group of course in that case uh, it's not not uh, a morphism of group of shift of group and in fact so lemma you can check uh, if you take sigma so for any unit uv i'm going quick i take two units what is the difference and you take sigma sigma applied to uv and you subtract so of course this is a priori uh, uh, non abelian shift and it is and you take this difference so this is an element here if you map here back it is trivial so this is an element here then this is the symbol. Okay, so uh, this universal construction, and so it's a central extension. So it's a central extension, which is characterized, and in fact, it is constructed by this formula here. You can check it's a central extension, and uh, the commutator. So uh, u, so it's the product now. U v, the uh, sorry, the commutator between sigma of u sigma v sigma u sigma of v minus one minus one and the commutator of this element here is h times so you can use this h time the symbol uv here this proves that this uh, uh, shift of group is non-abelian which is surprising the smallest one so it is denoted by f a1 of one so it's the free shift of str strongly a one in one group generated by one symbol and it's non abelian okay so let me finish by just a uh, couple of remarks uh, so it's a let's say question or conjecture it depends on uh, with whom you talk which we had uh, we had with uh, Arvind okay so conjecture open question or theorem it depends so uh, let's say I don't know if Arvid is there. He doesn't seem to be there, which is good. He's preparing, which is preparing a conjecture, so which is in fact proven. Okay, uh, proven in very many many cases. There is a yeah. Uh, if so, I just want to mention that this kind of uh, object can play a very important role. If X is uh, a one connected. smooth projective surface uh, over an algebraically closed field uh, we studied that a long time ago so smooth so a1 connected smooth projective surface uh, algebraically closed uh, in fact it's going to be rational for uh, such a surface and if you remove one rational point so you know this theorem in topology. You have a surface, uh, compact differentiable manifold of degree two, so connected, 
uh, it is A1 connected, so connected, you remove one point, it is homotopy equivalent to a wedge of circle. Okay? So this is homotopy equivalent to a wedge of P1s, finitely many, indexed by the rank of the Picard group, which is free. And the Picard group is a free uh, Abelian group of rank R. Uh, by the way, it's uh, also a nice formula. The Picard group of uh, such a guy is just the group of morphism from the fundamental group to GM. And because a uh, GM torsor is a covering, so there is a chemical morphism, etc. So, so this is a conjecture which we can almost prove, basically, and uh, we have a generalization to any perfect field uh, with uh, Anan. So this is a, and, uh, and then you should be able to reconstruct X, and because this is minus, so you have to choose an A2 <coughs> containing the point here, so you have a morphism from A2 minus zero, and if you complete here, uh, you go to A2, Uh, this should be. This is a co-Cartesian square, so x is the co-limit. It's the cone of this map here, so it's exactly the same form as in topology. Right? So face is the you have a, a map which is a product of commutators and so on and so on. So that should be the same pattern. Uh, let me finish by saying that uh, we'll probably be finished because uh, it's too long to say what I wanted to say. So thank you very much. <laughs>